Hey, welcome back. Another day, another vlog. How are we all, everyone out there in YouTube land? Hope you're all well on this fine Sunday. Nice little chillax Sunday for us. Very casual. Uh, wasn't casual at work, it was chaotic to say the least. So yeah, very busy day today. Lots of logistical things to sort out. I guess you could put it nicely. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, yeah, a bit done. I got a fair bit done last night, so it was good. I got some thumbnail stuff shot. Uh, I got the, the lens photos I needed sort of done as well. Bits and pieces, Got basically got all my setup done for the video. <clears throat> I guess the way when you do a video, the trickiest part is sort of where do you start and how do you get it to flow and on how to make your workflow easier. Um, and I sort of have learned in the last 12 months, the more you do in, the, in regards to setting up your files, uh, setting up your pictures and all that, getting that all ready, and then putting it into Premiere Pro or whatever editing software you're using, and then marking that in there so you know, so when you look at a file and you need to work out what you want to do next, you've got a description of what that actually pertains to. Um, and then that sort of makes it easy to pick up the next one and dump it in. You're not having to constantly go back and watch it to work out if there's anything in there worth using, if that makes any sense. So yeah, just say, I've, I think last night, I've, for the current video, the seven blade versus eight blade, I think I had like probably 10 or 15 or 20 uh, GoPro clips from moving around the place. So I've marked, gone through, sat there, watched them, marked them. If they're good, they're bad, um, what they are, so what I want out of it. So if it's a uh, drive-through tunnel. Uh, so I know that that clip's got a bit I want to use. It's got a drive-through the tunnel bit, if that makes sense. And then, you, then it's just a lot easier when you go to start putting it together, which I'm gonna start doing tonight. So that's pretty good. <clears throat> so hopefully I can basically get it, now I'll just come in and lay it all out on the timeline, get it sort of everything where it is, and then I go through and then clean it all up. Now, you can go through and clean it up exactly before you lay it all down, and then just put it down as you go. Um, I find it's a little bit easier to see the sound and all that other stuff when it's actually on the timeline and your preview screen, at least in Premiere Pro, in your preview screen, you can see the video, but you can't see the sound where you want to cut it and do stuff. It's a little bit easy to play with in there. Um, also use different sequences and stuff as well and then put them together. But I've also found lately that if I do multiple sequences, for some reason when, I'm, when I copy it all and then dump it into mix it all together, I'm losing some of my um, like edits on it, my color edits or sound edits for some reason don't copy over, which I think is a bit strange. But I'm, I'm, that's probably more so me, again I'm learning. But yeah, so I've got, anyway, long story short, I got a fair bit done last night in the prep. I got all the prep work I needed done, so now I can get in there and start grinding on that video and try and get it punched out. But yeah, very happy. There's, I think I've got enough in there to make a good video, so keep you entertained and give you a good idea about those two lenses. So yeah, can't wait. <clears throat> Lots more work to do. <laughs> now today, uh, obviously CES pretty much over and number. There's a couple of things left over from it. Um, Intel's graphic card. Let's have a chat about that one. Now Intel obviously big time on the processors and they're pretty much in every computer at the moment. AMD, AMD's really taking it to them and they've smashed them on the graphics card, the same as NVIDIA. AMD graphics and NVIDIA graphics are leagues ahead of Intel. They've never really been known for the graphics. They've always had a good pro processor. Um, the current 10th generation is still sort of just, just in front of AMD, I guess. The last couple of months have seen AMD make a heap of leaps and they're really taking it to them and Intel's gonna to have to come out with something this year to just stay in that one, two spot that sort of, it seems to constantly sort of just shuffle around at the moment. Now, 
as I said, so they they're really well known for processing. They do a great job. They all through business in probably a computer you use. They either you probably got a Xenon or an i7 or an i9 or everyone's got them. Um, well, well known. What they're not not known for is graphics cards. Now apparently they've had a couple of attempts at this in the past and failed miserably. I'm not sure why. If they just don't have the specialist people to design it, or they don't have the patents or the technology or whatever it is. There's obviously some sort of reason why they just can't get it across the line. Um, the boys are saying today from Linus to Tech Tips, um, always a wealth of info. <clears throat> just really haven't, since the 80s and 90s, sort of had a couple of goes, and even 2000s, they've had another crack. Well, they come out of CES with the DG1. Um, wasn't a super big success. Didn't really hear about it in all the big shows. I'd seen pictures of it and other ones, but no one was really talking about it. Um, the boys from TechLink had a good chat about it today. It's sorta of better. It's better than what they've had out before, I guess that's I guess what you could say. Um, but it's still nowhere near an AMD or an NVIDIA graphics card. Um, I, from what the boys are saying, it's probably really not worth it. <laughs> um, and they really know, they're gaming experts without a doubt. Um, tech side, they got that down pat. And it's sort of strange that it's very hard from a sort of a, a non sort of PC computer person and a, I guess not really a full blown tech computer person to understand why that they can't get that right. I mean, everyone can build a camera and everyone just has a different inflection on it. Um, and they do so good at processes and building these amazing little chips that run everything. Sure, I'm just under, it's very hard to understand the graphics card side of it. So, yeah, it look, it's come out, I, it's probably not going to sell real well. It's not super mega powerful. It's not going to compete with AMD or NVIDIA. It's nowhere near that. Um, it sort of gives a little bit of a, I guess, keeps their foot in the door. So, down the road, they may be able to get there. So, at least they're having a crack. Obviously, they know they've got the heat on them with AMD and that coming after their territory. So they're doing everything they can to sort of like, just keep another, just stay afloat. Leonardo DiCaprio on the log. Oh. <laughs> but um, it was interesting to hear that the first graphics card, uh, the boys went through a bit of history of graphics card, and the first graphic card was from the space mission. They had to do that to do some processes or whatever, and that, that's how we ended up with a graphics card. That was really interesting, um, and I found that quite sort of handy. Very, very cool, very different, and something you wouldn't think a gaming card has come out of how they had to, they used it, what was it, for docking the spaceship. So when they had the lunar module go down and it had to come back up and then re-dock with the, the bit that was gonna take them home, they had to learn how to dock. If they couldn't dock, well, they were gonna die. Um, so basically, I think it was um, Lockheed Martin and another company had formed and built a sit the first simulator, and that simulator ran off this graphics card, and that was the first graphics card. So yeah, basically it was it was an Intel. So very very well, very cool. They were partners in it, and then they ended up buying the license when the actual company failed. And <laughs> but yeah, very very cool. Something different. Now neon. AI was another big, big pump up one. They failed pretty much dismally and sort of didn't really go on. They were talking about AI and AI assistance and they had basically footage of actors dressed up and it was basically like this, this image was then being able to be manipulated by AI to talk to you, converse with you, blah, 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 uh, in the hopes of down the track something like going to the airport and you come up to a big panel and say, hey, I want to check in, here's my card. Oh, no worries, Mr. Kendra, how are you? Great, yep, two bags, cool, great that, no worries. I've checked them in, just chucked them on the rail and uh, your ticket will come out here. And you grab your ticket and keep moving. Um, but it didn't really go off like they hoped. Um, it was pretty disappointing. And I think that's why, again, you never heard from them. So obviously, these shows are about swinging for the fences, uh, and a lot of it's, I guess, trying to get their get their name out there and get their product out there, so they can try, I guess, to get either get some funding, get some interest from some bigger players to get some support and help, and 
And that, you know, I think they've succeeded in that and they've got a lot of interest in them. It's just whether they can then take that now and actually get a product that works. But if still many years off from what the boys are saying on us getting close to that. But um, yeah, it was a good, good idea. I think it's just the technology is not there yet. <clears throat> now, uh, for the fires, big, big news. Uh, fire relief for Australians. Uh, huge, huge queue that was uh, announced on in American television, on late night television. Uh, the original Wiggles are getting together to do a concert. So that's huge. Um, great to see them. They're obviously awesome Australians done so much in their careers and they've sort of taken a step back to be with their families. They don't need to really work to get enough money. They probably could retire a dozen times over with what they've made. Uh, and good luck to them for that. That's awesome they, for what they can do to keep a, the kids quiet and, and keep them entertained. They earn every penny without a doubt. Um, it's like teachers and, and preschool teachers, they, they earn their money without a doubt. It's a, it's a tough gig. Now, so they've come out and they're doing fundraisers and they'll be doing some concerts to obviously raise some money for the fire. So great to see that. Thanks, Wiggles. Um, I'm sure there'll be plenty of kids on that East Coast that will be super, super mega pumped to go out and see the originals and probably some parents as well to go out there and take the kids along and have some fun with them. That will be pretty cool and I'm sure they'll raise a packet of money. Now, on the fires and raising money, Lucky last for tonight, and it was pretty funny and very interesting uh, from Stephen Colbert, uh, the late night show. Uh, it was pretty cool. Talking about the Wiggles, raising money and all that. We've talked about all the amazing people that have raised money. Uh, Chris Hemsworth, uh, some golfers today raised, threw in a heap of money as well. Everyone's chipping in. Leonardo DiCaprio, all, everyone across everywhere is chipping in. It's been fantastic. And I'm sure all those poor people in the East Coast and those poor animals I really get, appreciate your support. I think it's fantastic that everyone can chip in at this time of need and actually dig deep and give a bit. And an Australian Instagram model, and I'm not sure how this works, and forgive me, but it's, it's pretty hard to sort of say with a straight face. Uh, and the Insta, I'm not sure if, it, not 100% it was Australian, but an Instagram model has raised $700,000 by selling nudes to her followers for a fee for a fundraiser for the fires. So this amazing lady has got the kid off and raised 700 grand, so bloody good job, love. Awesome. Get the jubblies out for the poor old animals, for the koalas and the skippies and everyone like that, and those poor people lost their home. And I don't think there'd be a person that could ever knock you. Uh, but yeah, wow. Anyway, you can and it happens. So it just shows you if you want to do something, you can do it and use whatever you got, whatever talents you got, you can use them. Uh, so a good note to finish on, I guess, for another week, another Sunday. Back to work tomorrow for everyone else. I'm still working. Tuesday for shift change. Last one for a while. So it's getting pretty good. End of day shift for a few months. And that's about it. I better get to work. I'm gonna get down here and do a bit of this. So you can do a bit of this and watch what I do. Anyway, that's it from me. Have a great day. Another day, another vlog. Uh, I'll see you all again tomorrow, Monday evening. And thanks for stopping by. Much appreciated. So if you're going that way, sliding this way, or shuffling that way, I'll see you all tomorrow. Peace.